Wealth, fame, power. 20-something years ago, Gold Rogers claimed anyone could have the One Piece if they can find it. Of course, that means passing the one chunk of land called the Red Line and entering the Grand Line. Some pirates have started this extensive search while others just dominate the waters that they can control. And some find no treasure at all. Which I never thought about before, but just being a pirate searching for treasure that, as it turns out, was already looted is pretty sad. Not only is finding absolutely no treasure sad, it's also sad knowing that it's possible to get stuck on one of these islands that we've been traveling on and nobody's gonna come rescue you. It's just like a castaway situation. Right now, our crew has these two little boats, but you can't enter the Grand Line with just a little boat like that. You're gonna need a strong pirate ship and probably more crew members. And the place we hope to find both of those things is in Syrup Village. It's a peaceful small town that's out of the way of the main journey, and apparently is pretty rare for pirates to visit. Which I mean, if you look at it, it makes sense. There's like, what, 10 buildings here? Most of it is grassland and it looks less populated than other villages we've met. So there's probably not a lot to do around here. That's where we meet Usopp, a character who runs around annoying the entire village. They go around telling these fake stories about their harrowing achievements, but I think they're the weakest character we've seen. Even though Nami can't take too many people on in a fight, at least she's smart enough to trick them. I don't know, Usopp just doesn't seem like that type of character. To put fuel to the fire, they're the first person who actually wants to join Luffy's crew in their own strange way. Also the first person who Luffy actually doesn't want in their crew. While Usopp claims to be, and clearly isn't, a pirate quite yet, their father sure is. We actually do see their father in the first chapter. The right here! The report of Shanks crew. I got a kid named Usopp, and he's just about your age. And despite missing his son, there's something utterly gravitating about piracy that just draws people to it. Besides annoying people on the island, Usopp spends time entertaining this girl in a mansion. The mansion also has Mary, who's a lamb person with little horns, which we've actually seen something like that before from Moji. Moji? I didn't even think about that, but there must be other characters who have animal features, right? Like, I don't know why that seems so normal to me. Alongside another butler, Claudor, which feels like they take care of uh, Kaya more than Mary does. And of course, Kaya is the girl in the mansion, whose family actually owned the mansion before they died. So all the wealth just goes to her. And you know, wealth attracts piracy. So pirates come in and just raid the village. Because Claudor, as it turns out, used to be a pirate. We see him in a flashback take down a navy ship and attack Axe Hand Morgan, who we met in the first arc, without the Axe Hand, without the faceplate. This is their origin story. It all comes back together. And now Claudor is going to use their old crew to raid the village and steal the loot. And there's a ton of interesting pirates this arc. Claudor's crew is like a cat-themed pirate ship. And it, it took me a while to realize that Claudor is a joke. Like, that's the joke. Like, claw a door because they're a cat pirate. I'm slow. That took me a while. We got the, like, Meowben brothers. They're, like, dressed up and everything, too. There's also Django, who can hypnotize people and even heal anybody slash make them stronger just by hypnotizing them. And all of these pirates are just coming together with a goal of stealing this mansion girl's wealth. And Claudor's, uh, the, the servant's gimmick, is that they have really big cat paws with, like, swords in them. Which, one, totally fits the cat pirate theme, and two, is really nicely hinted at. Like, I thought that looked weird. And so we get a ton of fights this arc. We got Usopp against Django. We got Zoro against the Meowband brothers. We got Luffy against Claudor. And as the fight takes longer and longer, Claudor just starts getting so mad, not even at Luffy, but just as his own crew, that they end up destroying their own crew. And again, we kind of see parallels between Shanks and Luffy's philosophy versus every other pirate that we've seen. Other pirate captains? I'm talking about Buggy, Alvida, Kuro, which is apparently the real name, have a I need more crew members slash oh you're strong? I want you in my crew type of philosophy versus Luffy's I value you as a crew member slash we got each other's back type of philosophy. A viewpoint that Nami starts to better understand about Luffy. Once they defeat all the pirates, Usopp wants to keep this a secret, which is kind of cute and wholesome, I think. 
pirates hardly ever bother going out of their way to come here, so why ruin their peace of mind? It's much better just to have a boring old day where Usopp just runs around and would cause trouble. Though, now that it's all over, Usopp wants to become a pirate of their own. But like, actually, and not just telling lies. Leaving the kids that used to make trouble with Usopp as the only distraction around this town. Of course, he can't set sail without a good boat. And after saving the village, we're finally gonna get a really good boat. Mary goes ahead and brings him a ship that he made called the Going Mary. I've actually seen this boat around before. I thought it was called like the Go Mary or something, but that's, that's not right. I think it's a cute ship design. Like, look at that flag doodle. It's a cute ship. And so that ends this arc. We're still reviewing them one arc at a time. It's been a blast reading through all this stuff. I mean, feel free to read along and follow along. You know, you know the drill. You, you know what to do. 